Hi everyone, it's Nono here. For those of you who are connecting for the first time or watching this video offline, I'm Nono Martinez Alonso. I try to learn and teach machine learning, creative coding, and many, many other things. This is what I call Nono Ma Live. It's a live stream that happens at the moment every Thursday, and we're going through the second season. So we took a break during summer and we got back with a set of goals that I'll show today as a recap. And yeah, without further ado, I'm gonna get started uh, trying to make the intro as uh, short as possible. And I would thank you if you can tell me, if you can hear me okay, if you can see me, if everything looks all right. All right. And you can, you know, you can say hi on the chat and you can also join the Discord community. All right, let's get started. I would ask you to like this video if you want to support the channel and the work I'm doing here with these videos and uh, to subscribe and click on that bell if you want to get notified when I go live next or when I upload new videos. The community is on Discord, so it's a Discord server. We have different chats for different purposes and there you can get to know other people like you and uh, also you know, share the work you're doing, introduce yourself and say what your interests are. Um, yeah, it keeps growing and I, I'm really happy when I see new people joining. Okay, um, last week, um, thanks to Jeff for, for verifying that audio and video are good. Last week, we covered a bit of the collaborative AI sketching project and uh, PIX to style to PIX. We just watched a few videos and, and skimmed through the paper. I haven't read the paper in depth yet. Uh, we didn't have time to go through the ML course in any part. I'm starting to work through the topics and stuff. We just mentioned a bit what it would be and we're going to extract a few videos from that. Uh, we did have a working session on the AI sketching project, which we're going to continue right now. And uh, here is um, the video that I'm using to announce this live stream now on Instagram and Twitter. So you can follow uh, on the top right, you have my account, it's Nono ESP. I'm going to try to be a bit more active there in sharing when things are going to happen related to YouTube and the live stream. These are the goals. So we have the intention to create an intro machine intelligence course called Intro to Machine Intelligence for Designers. It was, this would be a free playlist on my YouTube account. Uh, we have uh, the intention of fostering the community, uh, the weekly, monthly, our monthly challenges are something uh, suggested by Sajed that other channels uh, use as well and we could have. And we have two, uh, another stretch goal, which is build a collaborative AI sketching platform, which, you know, it's going to take time, but we had our first working session last week. And I'm also trying to work with others to delegate video post-processing um, and managing the channel so I can focus on doing more live streams and creating more videos instead of editing them. Okay. As always, you can submit questions at gettingsimple.com slash ask or submit a written question. I'd be happy to answer your questions on future episodes of the podcast. That is the Getting Simple podcast, in case you don't know what I'm talking about. And today, uh, we're going to uh, try to look at a few frameworks um, to create a drawing app. And this is part of the collaborative AI sketching project. And I think, you know, we're going to focus on that today. We're going to start working as soon as we can. Uh, all right, so let me see, I have two covers here. Mm, all right, so I'm gonna make an intro for this right now. Hi everyone, it's Nono here, and this is another working session of the collaborative AI sketching project that we're trying to do. We're trying to build a system in which uh, multiple people and multiple bots and machine intelligences can draw together, can sketch together, and we can get intelligent suggestions from one another. And also developers or people who want to extend the system will have a protocol to uh, extend it or maybe um, expose other intelligent bots and machine learning models. This is a big intent. It's hard, but we're going to try it. And uh, the first thing we're going to do today, so this is the topic for today, I'm going to introduce in case we do a separate um, cover, it's seen. 
Hi everyone, it's Nono here, and this is a working session part of the collaborative AI sketching project on how to build a drawing app. We're gonna take a look at different frameworks and we're gonna actually get hands-on coding to try to create our own drawing application and be able to uh, draw in an endless canvas and you know have features uh, in which we can draw in a web tab and have also the vector um, coordinates and, and data about the strokes that we're doing. All right, without further ado, let's get coding. All right, so today's intro has been shorter. I tried to make an effort to do that. I want to welcome anyone who is new to the channel that connects today. Say hi in the chat, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open the Discord server. We're gonna take a look at a few links that drop Beal, which I believe might be here online with us today, shared on the um, on one of the channels of the live stream. So those are here. So let me, yeah, so, um, there is this project called Perfect Freehand that uses YJS. And uh, there is another one here that says Awesome Drawing App. So uh, we're going to take a look first at uh, Awesome Drawing App. And I'll take a chance also to say hello to Mama Dukali. Hello. It's been a while since I see you, but it's nice to to see that you're back and that you have time to connect online while we're live. So this is an awesome drawing app. So this is in Rebel It. I like the name. I hadn't seen this before um, Rob had sent it to me. So Rebel is the, the Rebel term and then It for the brand. So we can see here the code of this application which I'm not sure if I managed to, to make this work for, for me. Okay. Yeah. So it works here. So we, we just get a canvas and, um, I'm going to open these other links because I don't want to have a uh, discord open. It consumes a lot of resources for some reason. All right. So we have here, um, this one. So awesome drawing up and published which I'm not sure if it's simply so you see perfect freehand and YJS and web RTC provider. Yeah, so this might be code that we can that we can use so let me let me just put here or maybe let's just make a note on my desktop live 41 or just 41 or maybe just live so we are gonna copy these links here just to make sure that I can share them with you later and this one okay so this is a project that is using perfect freehand and yjs and this web rtc library why web rtc let's look web rtc connector for yjs Propagates document updates peer to peer to all users using WebRTC, fast message, blah, blah, blah. What is WebRTC? WebRTC. With WebRTC, let's see, real time communication for the web. Add real time communication. Okay, so. Really quickly, what is um, WebRTC? It's a real-time communication for the web. With WebRTC, you can add real-time communication capabilities to your application that works on top of an open standard. It supports video, voice, and generic data. 
to be sent between peers, allowing developers to build powerful voice and video communication solutions. How does this compare? Okay, so this is a solution from Google. And I want to see a comparison between WebRTC and WebSockets. While both are part of the HTML5 specification, WebSockets are meant to enable bidirectional communication between a browser and a web server, and WebTC is meant to offer real time communication between browsers, predominantly voice and communications. Two way communication at TCP, whereas PT enables peer to peer communication in the browser and mobile. WebRTC is more secure, only supported right now by certain browsers, while WebSockets is compatible with almost all existing browsers. In terms of scalability, WebSockets uses a server per session approached approach and WebRTC is peer to peer. All right, so that might be the biggest difference, right? RTC is peer to peer, so it's browser to browser. On WebSockets, um, let me let me actually draw here so we can learn something because we are going to use WebSockets. Um, we might try RTC, but that's something I haven't tried before. So let's go with a Remarkable. And all right, so I have the live stream here. Accept. All right, so let me take a look. So All right. Cool. Okay, so we do have our uh, so this is where we left it last week. And um, I'm going to make a new page here. So I don't know how to do this so you see my face while I'm sketching, but I guess I can do something like this. So live um, 41. And I would say, you know, web sockets. Something like we have a, so we have a server. I imagine this is your server. I don't know how to make this look like a server. And uh, then you have different people that are connecting to it, right? So they're sending data and they're getting it. And we can say that we, you know, we can connect a bot here. which has some sort of neural network in it. And it can also send. So this is a computer that is sending and receiving information. So you can send things maybe from an application, from your browser, and then a system can send from the command line, right? So let's say CLI, browser. And on the other side is web RTC which seems to be like different people with their devices, right? So this is probably more like this. Um, can communicate among them. We can probably also do other systems, right? So this would be different people. I think this is the difference in in paradigm, right? From this would be a of this bot. Okay, so that's uh, WebRTC versus WebSocket. And uh, this one is made by Google, it seems. It's said to be more secure but less supported for now. Okay, so this gives us a tiny overview of what that is. And it seems that that example of code that we're seeing on the, um, 
on the example that we have here, the awesome drawing app is using that one. So I'm not sure like if I open this here and I open two different ones, I'm going to play here and I'm going to play here again. I'm not sure if this is going to connect the two applications together. Just the loading, this one is ready. All right, it actually does connect the applications together and it's super fast. All right, cool. So we have this concept of the, the circle, right? So it's always syncing. Cool. All right, let's take a look at the code. That's interesting. And So YJS, okay, so CDR, conflict-free replicated data types for collaborative editing are an alternative approach to trans operational transformation. The very simple differentiation between two approaches is that OT attempts to transform index positions to ensure convergence. While CRDTs use mathematical models that usually do not involve index transformation, like linked lists, OT is currently the de facto standard for shared editing on text. OT approaches here are better for the distribution system, provide initial guarantees. All right, so we have this, this paradigm, right? For, all right, so, uh, da, 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 da. okay, so let's, um, let's take notes here. So YJS is, <clears throat> a library for shared data types, collaborative software. And we're gonna write here, okay, we can write this better. All right. YJS, and this is notes for life 41. Cool. Okay, so we can keep this document open and uh, it's a network agnostic peer-to-peer -peer, supports many existing rich editors, offline editing, version snapshots, undo, redo, and shared cursors. It scales well with an unlimited number of users and is well suited for even large documents. Demos, okay, so let's take a look at the demos. Draw perfect pressure sensitive freehand lines. Okay, so let's see. So what's really nice is that with this uh, example application, so the awesome drawing app that Rob shared, we actually get a lot done of what we intend to do on the on the live stream, right? With the collaborative um, AI sketching project because it's using a protocol that allows for uh, distributed drawings so collaborative drawing, multiple people. We don't have a centralized database in this example, so everything gets lost, but you know, that's something we can work around to, to store the things that are being done. And uh, we get vector drawings, so this is really nice. Let's take a look at, um, yeah, this, these bindings I've seen before. So these are examples on, on how to do collaborative um, writing right so i could i could put two of these browsers here and we could say this is the none of my life stream mm 
all the times. Right, right. So this works pretty well. So cursor selection. Hmm. All right, so uh, Right, cool. This is view. So I guess we can take a look at how this is built really quickly so we get a bit more familiar. Tip tap demo. The WebSocket provider implements a classical client-server model. Clients connect to a single endpoint over WebSocket. The server distributes awareness information and document updates among clients. The WebSocket provider is a solid choice if you want a central source that handles authentication authorization. WebSockets also send hand header information and cookies. This seems like what we're gonna try. So let's let's start laying out. Um, a few of the things that we are going to be doing. All right, so let me open Notion. Cool. Right, so there are many things here that we are going to try. So we got the live stream notes here. And All right, so okay, so this is like forty one, but we're working on the collaborative AI sketching project, so hmm, we might want to put that there. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at uh, so YJS and the Y WebSocket connector or provider. So this is a, a provider, which we're gonna save from here. And uh, tip tap demo, no. All right, let's, let's close things. So let, let's go one by one. So we have this sample awesome, awesome drawing app which has um perfect freehand and yjs and we're going to close these things and we're going to take a look at pet perfect freehand okay so doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's make a, a cover here to a vector drawing framework.
pressure sensitive drawing free hand drawing library all right cool let's make a quick um we're gonna take a look at this um give me just really one second really really quickly i'll be back this will be 30 seconds all right Right, I'm here. Great. Okay, so we have this cover. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. okay. Where is this? Okay, so I'm going to move this over here, so we don't have multiple apps for the same thing, and I can see the. Um, Notion is not super lightweight for for me to be opening it here. So I might just open a new tab. So we have Notion on Google Chrome, which is already open. Okay, let me try. So I'm gonna close Notion. Come on. All right, we got it. So this is the same, the same document. Okay, so notion <laughs> so we'll want to think of the things that should not be synced among users what what do you mean like what type of information do you think could be shared that that doesn't need to be shared okay so let's take a look here so we have episode so this is like 41 so we're gonna zoom in and have our notes and yeah so we're gonna maybe not that big and yeah so we have this links section so this is all inside 41 and now here we have some notes and this is gonna be here all right so um mm -mm. all right so we were gonna take a look at um this perfect freehand library 
And seriously, I don't know what's making my computer go so slow today. Um, cool. All right. I will take a look at this and let's use the discover. Hi everyone, it's Nono here and this is an overview on something called freehand, um, perfect freehand. So this is a pressure sensitive a freehand drawing library that uh, we're going to take a look on GitHub and we're going to try to implement a simple application using it to, to see how you actually write an application from scratch. Okay, I'm going to record again just in case. Hi everyone, it's Nono here and this is a quick overview on how to use Perfect I'm going confused with this. So uh, Rob Hill is saying here, imagining two plus people working on separate drawings on the same canvas or two plus people applying different models to the same drawing. Let me move away from, from this for a second. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, that can be solved with the concept of creating different canvas or different drawings. But yeah, it's true that if we want to have an endless canvas at the beginning, privacy might be a concern. Um, but yeah, let's see. I mean, let's see how we go. I don't think that's a super big concern right now, but we'll think about it. Hopefully we get there. Okay, so one last time. Hi everyone, it's Nono here, and this is a quick overview on Perfect Freehand. This is a pressure sensitive freehand drawing library that is open source on GitHub. And we're gonna try to do a hands-on experiment. So hands-on example where we can actually code um, a drawing application from scratch. So let's get coding. All right, so let me stop this thing and get back there. All right, so let's get coding for, for real, right? Um, I have maybe too many tabs open and that might be also a reason why this is going a bit slower. Okay, so this is perfect freehand. You can go to the website where, you know, there is an example here where you can, um, you can move and I saw the other day, you can even zoom in and out and you can move down. So let's say I do here number one and number two and the number three and I keep going. So this would be six, five, four, right? So now we can go and, and see my field color can change stroke thinning size right so the thinning is um, the effect of speed on the on the thickness uh, we have smoothing smoothing and we have the cap start and cap end right so this makes for really nice um so we can remove smoothing and do a lot of stuff right so this is um, perfect freehand in a nutshell. So this is what it allows us to do. We can copy the SVG and uh, then we have the SVG file. And uh, there are many things that we can do probably. They have this menu here and the GitHub repo. So I just put here uh, a logo. So this would be um, no, no. life right so this is a tool that is i don't know i like it because it's super smooth and it doesn't seem to be consuming a lot of resources i don't know maybe my live stream now is going a lot slower but uh, who knows 
All right, so this is here. It's on a canvas. We can zoom in, we can draw, we can go out. It's an actually an endless canvas. I don't know if it has limits, but it looks like this is indeed a, an endless canvas. All right, so how do we use it? So we're gonna take a look at GitHub to see how to consume it. Perfect, try out a demo. We already did that. And here using this library, blah, 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 not a commercial product, at least now. So it's an NPM package. So we just do NPM install perfect freehand. This package exports a function name get stroke that accepts an array of points and an optional options object. Returns a stroke outline as an array of points formatted as X and Y. Import get stroke perfect hand, get stroke, get stroke. All right, so we can pass from here, we can pass a, an array or we can pass um, an array of objects which have X, Y and pressure. That's um, what, what we saw that might affect. And uh, the options object is optional as are each of its properties. So except for uh, X and Y, right? Um, we can pass uh, these properties tapering options for the start line, blah, 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 cap, get stroke, my points, and the options. Okay, so the options come here, so they will come after the get stroke object. Rendering. Well, get stroke returns an array of points representing the outline of the stroke. It's up to you to decide how you will render these points. The function below will turn the points returned by get stroke into SVG path data. Okay. To render stroke as a flattened polygon, add the polygon clipping package and use the following function together with the get SVG path from stroke. Polygon clipping sample. Edit on code sandbox. All right, so we're gonna take a look here. At this example. All right. Okay, so I guess let's let's try a simple example and and then we'll inspect other things. More functions, blah blah blah. Mm, nice. So it has TypeScript typings, which is what I want to use. All right. So let's go back at how we actually use it. And okay, so this is here. And let's take a look at the example. So tutorial, script markdown, perfect freehand tutorial. Starter file is in functions. Hey, this is Steve Reed, author of the perfect behind library for JavaScript. To begin, let's take a look at our starter project. In our HTML, we have an XML with some inline style to make it take up the whole window. We also have a JSON file that contains an array of points.
right maybe we can follow this this tutorial and take a look at how this works and let me just take a look at the source code here so is probably obfuscated yes and um hmm Wait, how how is this so new? Last month, All right? Cool. Okay, so this is the model. So this is the package <clears throat> we have here: scripts, build.js. As build. All right. So this is to build the the library. All right, so I'm going to um, take a look at the source. So index.ts. Get stroke. Get stroke outline points. vector operations nice in typescript so here we have a vector or negate a vector this is nice i'm gonna save this here perfect freehand vector operations in typescript Oh, types, stroke options. So this is typings for the library and uh, get stroke outline points. So we have Okay, so this is, we don't need to get into depth into the code. I'm gonna do this thing that we learned last week on the live stream. So we can put here a 1S, Panjot, Aris told us. And we can browse the project like a champ. Everything's TypeScript. This is awesome. All right, great. So let's actually just go and use the, the project. Let's use the packet. So we're gonna go to our desktop. We're gonna make um, directory is called 41. And I'm gonna go into 41 and i'm gonna do npm so let me make this bigger so you can see so so i'm gonna make npm init yes so everything 
get set to yes and um, we're gonna do npm install save perfect freehand so this should get us the package it doesn't seem to have any dependencies that's crazy but crazy good and uh, now we're gonna make Let's just make uh, an index file. So we just do plain HTML for now. So I've created this folder, right? Here, we have installed perfect freehand. We have the, the distribution build of the library. We can see in our packages that that's our only dependencies, the latest version. And I have here a, website so I'm just putting here the base HTML code like some bits is HTML code we don't need jQuery and um, so this is like 41 and I'm gonna do serve so I'm gonna start a live server here and that is here so we can see so this is our website and you can see if I write an H1, right? So that updates in real time. Okay, so the thing that we need to do here, we have the build on the packages and we're serving this directory. So if I were to remove, well, maybe I have listing allowed, so node models. Yeah, you can see that this yeah i don't really know which library i need to use let's try to do freehand Vercel was it okay so i'm gonna take a look at the um, bundle hmm yeah, so everything's bundled up. I don't know which one should I use. ESM, CJS, ESM. Well, let's take a look. So, common JS and ESM is ES models. All right, yeah, I definitely wanna work like this. So let's use ESM. And let's use this one. So I'm just going to get, that's a small library. Huh. Okay. So we are going to go to our, to here and we'll, we'll load our library. I'm just going to load it like that. <coughs> right there unexpected token export All right, why don't we just build directly a React application? So how can we quickly build a React application? Okay, so I'm going to, instead of doing this, so I'm going to remove everything here. So let's go to the desktop and remove for 41. We're gonna make a new one. 
and it's gonna be called um, 41 all right so yes Again, meanwhile, I'm gonna take a look at this code. So we just import right, let's try this out. Okay, so still adding packages, okay. Okay, here we have um, create React app with TypeScript. Really, data driven react applications, right? So, this is create React app, and we wanted to see this. Second, how it is, guide. React TypeScript cheat sheets. We're gonna save this one as well. React TypeScript cheat sheets. Right? There's that one. That one. Okay, how's this? Happy hacking. All right, so CD forty one yarn start. And here we are. So let me close this, this. Okay. All right, so let's edit the code. Let's make sure that React is properly working, which seems like it is. And um, I'm going to I'm gonna close the terminal.
Ok. Okay, so here I'm going to. Okay, I'm gonna try. So FS, let's put the font size slightly bigger so you guys can see the source code. Yep. Great. And we can close this now. All right, so we have this app. We can do jar and start here in our in our terminal here in the bottom. And what this is doing is starting our application. So the application will go create it automatically. And, and this is what we can see here. We can make this slightly smaller so we get a proper console there. And uh, quickly, we can make changes to the app. So you can see, you know, this is, we can hide the terminal now. We have our index.tsx file here, which defines what we're seeing on the application. And so we are simply um, rendering the the application and our app component is here so we can do here like remove this and we can put here no no dot ma live 41 boom yes and that's it and we have here the the css that makes this thing rotate right so all right so um okay so we have the react application working we can remove a lot of stuff but for now we're just going to take out this this image here so i'm going to open the terminal once again and i'm going to open another terminal here csh and I'm going to do once again the save, install, perfect, freehand. And um, uh, we're going to start adding to our React application. So that shouldn't... Oh, actually, well, I don't think it matters, but I am going to do journey start, perfect, freehand, because that's that's what's being used here. So... Um, Oh, yarn add perfect freehand and uh, now we can actually go to the perfect freehand repo on um, github and take a look at the command so how to add this to our application so we've seen here we just need to do import import get stroke from perfect freehand and we get the autocomplete, right? So we could directly use here, get stroke. So we get a stroke here if we input a set of numbers. So we can do zero to one, three, three, Three zero zero three. I don't know. Like that doesn't make a lot of sense. But that's our stroke, and I'm just gonna log the stroke, and also gonna log the get stroke um, function. All right, so we have here our stroke. So this is a stroke. Hmm. 
wonder why it's logging twice. Okay, so it's logging this here, this one. All right, so that is our, this is our stroke and I assume if I change this, it changes. All right, so yeah, I don't know what this is. This is just the coordinates of a stroke that we've done with this X and Y's. Pressure. So support a function name gets stroke that accepts an array of points and an optional options object returns a stroke outline as an array of points of points formatted as X and Y. All right, so this is the outline of our of our uh, stroke that we've supposedly done here, but now we need to actually make a draw in canvas, right? So let's see, yeah, this all explains how to do stuff, but I think what's nice is this work in progress tutorial, right? Starter file. So you have a path and this is doing a low pass. So helpers. Cool. All right, so that's uh, easing functions. Okay, this is Steve Reed. We already read this before, so. Check the link in the video description. What video? This tutorial will show you how to use perfect freehand. What its different options are and how you, okay, so maybe, oh, okay. So this, this might be a, the script of a presentation that he's gonna do. And that's all it takes to make a drawing app. When the user stops pointing, we release the pointer capture. When the user moves, okay. For we begin, let's take a quick tour of the project. Okay, let me actually take a look at Steve Reef on YouTube. We're going to use in order to find the path what it would look like with no stream definitely the same person <laughs> so steve reeve
All right. So just taking a look at this, I'm getting crazy. Okay. Um, Right, I'll have to watch these things later just to see more of this. Okay, so we're gonna put this. On the notes. Steve Reef, uh, deal draw that. Okay, so uh, all right. So where are we? <clears throat> Being this here. So we have opened many things here, and using the TS. Okay, great. So let's keep going. So let, let's follow this tutorial that I wanted to say. So blah, blah, the library can use real pressure to adjust the width of the line or I can see my pressure too. And there are plenty of ways to customize how a line looks and feels. The library is free to use. This tutorial will show you how to. Let's get started. So to begin, let's take a look at our starter project. Uh, if you'd like to follow along, you can find a link to the project in the video description. In our HTML, we have an SVG element with some inline styles that make it take up um, the whole window, right? So ID is SVG, all right? So we'll put this on our HTML. So this is here. Um, header. Let's put this here. And style convert this so percent. I'm making this an object. So in this case, it's a TypeScript object, right? Or JavaScript object. Putting a background color so we can see the item in case that it shows up. Right, and it actually gets all of the screen. So I guess if we move this below, maybe everything shows up on top. Mm, not really. Okay. Position is fixed. All right. So this is our S SBG. I guess we can remove everything else from here. We don't really care that much. Or even, I mean, we could even remove everything here. 
for now, I guess we can we can simply keep this item. Okay, and let's see what else. So we also have a JSON file contains scenario points, X and Y positions. And hello, Bea. Uh, I'm glad to see you connecting online. And um, the same kind we would record from a user drawing uh, with their mouse or trackpad. Okay, so we will get that JSON done in our JavaScript. We're importing those points. Um, points and using them to create a string of SVG path data. Next, we're creating an SVG path element. And improvements, okay. Adding perfect freehand. We start by installing the perfect freehand dependency, which we've done so we can follow from here. And we create uh stroke by passing the points right so this is what we were already doing so we can say that we've done that step and also uh base our path data off of this stroke instead we'll look at that our line has changed from a line to a polygon Okay, so we can do this and we can have our path data. Well, actually, let's let's follow along. So, from start to end. Okay, I'm gonna. That we're getting into the mood, so I'm gonna get into a quick break, and I'll be back. So it's gonna be like a from two to five minute break, and I'll be back to uh, continue this coding session. We're gonna try to get like um, something rendered with perfect freehand on on screen.
Okay, I'm back. Anyone online? Okay, let's close this thing. Okay, let's let's get going with this. So we have the setup done. We have a few points. We have our actually we already have our get stroke here. Um, so and using them to create an SVG. Okay, so imagine that we do path data, right? So we do path data here and um, uh, all right so the um, one second
All right, sounds back. <laughs> okay, and I'm here. Cool. Uh, thanks for, for sticking around. I have been just taking a look at this and um, seeing what happens. So what happens here is uh, it's assuming, so the document's assuming that we have a, like an HTML file, right? And it's using JavaScript to construct a DOM element and then append it into the file and put it in there. But in um, on React, we can directly do these things here on the on the DOM, right? On the DOM object that we're uh, returning. So we don't need to uh, create an element and append the path and, and do these things manually, right? So we're going to uh, remove all of these things here. Uh, we don't even need to create the path. We can pass the path data there. And right now we don't need the stroke data. And let's see, we might still get an error there. Do you mean stroke width? Yeah, so in React, instead of putting these dashes, right? Like for example, in CSS, background, color, and things like that, you would do background color. Um, I think that's camel case, right? And that's how you do stroke width. And that's the error we're getting right now. And the path attribute, it is not liking it. Mm, I'm unsure why, but let's take a look. And you know, one thing as you can see here, this is a like a bundle as we were seeing before on the on the freehand application. Okay, so uh, um, let's see. So from the elements on this page we see here that we have a path and it's not liking not liking this svg path d not understanding why this is not liking so this is path d attribute the expected number Yeah, that might be it. All right, so our path is there. You don't see it, but it's there. So we can now um, maybe put like another path that makes a bit more sense. Um, mm -mm. Like uh, 100, maybe, I don't know, 300 and 150, 150 and 100. And then one or 300. Let's see what I've done. Okay. So we're going from 100, 100 to 300, 150. And then we would have to keep the 300 here. And stay at 300. All right. And then maybe just go back to the beginning. Okay, so we got that path there. So that seems like our SVG drawing here is working. And we're gonna continue with the guide. So we have, okay, maybe a little back. Yeah, I mean, it's not great. Some improvements. If we want to improve this, we would normally do something like this. First, we would simplify the points. So we, we can simplify the points. A low pass, we could apply a low pass to the points. And finally, instead of creating a path data connects each point by line, we create path data connects each point by a curve. Now that's much better than what we had before, but it's still not quite perfect. For one, this kind of simplifying curve approach can only be applied after a line is completed. Let's add perfect freehand and see what we can do. So we'll start with creating our stroke. So we do our stroke here and um, 
we get the strokes, so we have the points. And we define now uh, first and rest. So this is first, and this is the rest. And then Z here. Then let's get rid of our stroke and give the line a fill instead. So we don't do stroke and put it black. All right. So see what's happened. So I. So we have. Let Let's actually move this. By I don't know maybe three hundred five hundred. Okay. Not sure if that changes anything. All right, so we got that and size now that we have the stroke turned off our lines looking a little thing to increase the list option objects so we are gonna pass size 16 so we're gonna pass a like an options object here it's gonna be like size 16 right and nice so now we can increase the thickness of our path great okay and um that looks better thinning you might be okay so you have thinning you have um all right let's try thinning zero just to make sure it doesn't thin out okay so the there it's doing something weird here where it's it's flipping instead of um doing it right so we go from that point so which point is this okay Doing something a bit weird there. Yeah, I don't really know why that happens. Maybe this, you know, this way of drawing the line is not the best. Okay, we'll see better. Smoothing, blah, blah, blah. And then curves can be a little bit more, so let's bring really it to help us out. In our demo, a smoother line looks more geometric. But there are lots of reasons why you might want to keep smoothing as high as possible, especially if you're storing points in some sort of state. To fix the low poly look, we can update our SVG path curve, blah, blah. blah. Let's try again. Hmm. Something 
has to be wrong or maybe maybe this is not thought to have such separate points right so let, let's try to get an array of points Right, so let's copy these points. We're gonna close this. So this is gonna be our new points array. Hey. Okay, and we can set our stroke path to Three. All right. Thinning, so thinning, streamline, smoothing one, streamline 0 0.5. Nice. All right, so we don't have a drawing app, but we have a app that can beautifully um, show what we are um you know that like a, a set of points right hmm so do, 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 do. we don't need this Let's thin it up Ooh. Okay, so I don't know like how Okay, I guess this is um...
who get stroke outline points. All right, so I'm trying here to, so from the, let, let's see what this gives us. So if I do this on the stroke, we get a set of numbers. Mm. points the type number is missing the forward properties stroke point Points, the stroke point. Right, let's see what this gives us. Right, so I'm trying to do stuff and, and understanding it, and I'll I'll explain a bit what's going on. So, right, we don't really need these ones. Get stroke outline points. I guess we could render that. Stroke points. All 
well whatever so what we know is that we can render this shape to use this function first use perfect freehand to turn your input points to stroke line and that's it and then path data if you're rendering with html canvas you can pass the result to add path to the constructor flattening to render a stroke as a flattened polygon add the polygon clipping package and um, see example project in this repository example react um, utils All right, so this seems to be a drawing application that we can use. So we have a set of functions here. Let's actually copy and paste. Let's just see. Well, it's not copy and paste the entire thing because we don't have so do 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 um it as react from react react use state okay so let's actually let's actually do this mm. so we're gonna do react use state and we're gonna get these two helper functions to handle this page down and Right, so here we have a on pointer down handle pointer down and pointer up handle pointer up. Move. Okay, so style touch action none. Okay, I'm gonna close a few things because this does go super slow right now. Ah, we have this open. Mm -mm. looking for the sample the sample project hmm right here we have a sample so editor controls panel okay so this might be this might be the um, the application that's on the web that we can use so we need to look for the editor All right, yeah, so this seems to be like a full-fledged uh, drawing application. Hmm. Up. Yep, we're going to have to build up on that. All right, so what is the um, mouse down TypeScript? Let's see the types.
pointer event handler. All right. Yeah, the pointer, so the, the event handlers, I don't understand how this is so hard. Pointer event on pointer down SVG, SVG element.
Hmm. All right. It seems we we hit a dead end. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be harder than I thought. Okay, so it's good. So we just don't have a way to build that application. Um, how can this be so hard? Pointer event handler. Right, let me see. Let's just remove this from here. Right. Mouse event. Okay, so event equals react mouse event SVG SVG element. Copy yeah. All right. Run this. E E All right, what is this? Pointer event. All right. never react set state action never hmm. what? Client X, page X, where is page X, page X.
react mouse event um, page x number is not assignable to type never set points So this is react use state never. Uh, mm -mm. Of course. Okay, so here I'm adding the um, this type of the state. So with an interface that tells that this is gonna be points, state properties. Mm. Mm. No, that's gonna be like this. Right, that seems better okay and now this doesn't complain so set points and we have the points okay let's try that so okay something's showing up there you can see and now we're going to do the same for handle so All right, let's stop logging here. Well, okay, we got something. Seems like something is working. It hasn't been easy. Cool. All right, we got a, a drawing up and All right, it worked. So we have a, our first drawing application that uses the minimal code that we can with a perfect freehand. And let me go once more to GitHub.
yeah so i mean it's really nice let me see if i can do set points points e page 100 more set points yeah i guess we can make it so it never ends is that it yeah so or anything yet but we'll hopefully get there okay so we're gonna leave it here so this is our first perfect drawing app my computer is going a bit slow this seems like maybe consumes some resources and okay let me see what can i do here before we go Mm, terminal. Okay, so desktop. So let's go to the to the desktop. We have forty one. Status. All right, so we're going to, could we cover vector to raster quickly? Vector to raster quickly. Um, with this, with this application or with what exactly? So, I mean, so Rob is asking if we could cover vector to raster. Let me see. Okay, so uh, in browser, browser API. Yeah, let me let me take a look here. So I have um, this application. We can go. I think. I think I do have Okay. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to push this code to GitHub. So Right, so we're going to commit. Uh, All right, so what I'm going to do is open Okay, so just going to copy so move this here and also make sure we move so react so we move from desktop react git ignore move here git ignore okay so we are here and now we can add oh, 41 
Okay, so we're pushing that, so that's now online. So you can see it here at, um, ah, no, I didn't want to do this. Mm. Mm. Non models. Right, that's going to take some time. Add overline. Hmm. Ooh. Okay. I'm glad we had this here because I've deleted the application. All right, I've deleted the app, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to recover it right now. Um Okay. Okay, so Right, let's see if this is now. Hey, John Mark, how's it going? Nice to see you connecting online. Okay, so we're going to move uh, 0041v2 to 0041. And all for one B two status, okay. Okay, let's see if that works now. 
All right. Okay, so it's online. Hopefully that works and we didn't lose anything. And yeah, we have to go to the right folder. Okay, so you ask about, um, so we have, so Rob asked, as the last thing for today um, about raster the vector images quickly, right? Like something we talked about the other day, like we can go from, from vector to raster. And I think we can. I have a video in which I already did that and we can probably get the code really quickly. So, any other thing before we go? I am really tired today. I had to start really late and I gotta go now. So, videos. Okay, so videos, we're gonna put here canvas. Okay, so we have the app and we can run it to verify we didn't lose anything. And hey, hi Major, how's it going? Let me, in case you load your mark and Major to see you online. Cool, all right. All right, so we have this thing here. Mm. Mm, yeah, we, um, we deleted the so we deleted a file that we need to create again so let's just create an app from scratch and see what's missing So we, it seems like we need to have a canvas to, to do that. We have this thing. Hello, Juanda. How's it going? Nice to see you online. Hola. Okay. So, yeah, today's been a bit slow, I have to be honest, but I was really tired and, and it's been, it's been a bit bumpy, but we got, we got somewhere. Okay. If we had a canvas, there is this video that I'm going to share on the, um, on the YouTube channel. What is this? And 
yeah so that is a video that will get you through how to get the image data and a data url from the from a canvas in which you're drawing but in this case we're doing something else we're rendering um, we're rendering svgs and for that we need something else in this case um we can do this but yeah i'm i'm not gonna do this right now so i'm gonna take note of this uh, we're gonna wrap up now i'm gonna take note that this is something that we wanted to do so get the svg to a data url or, or do some other raster so perfect freehand raster ice and um yeah let's see if this finishes yeah actually what i was missing is all this directory right this is public i was missing everything <laughs> okay let's try fixing this and, and that's enough right so we have this here and we are missing the the source and the public directory again inside of app we can replace with our app and i think that's it so jarn start should give us the application running okay so i'm gonna upload to github the fixed application and <laughs> yeah we need to get some sleep it's 10 a.m no 10 p.m here okay so um yeah it's productive we've done progress on the collaborative AI sketching project. We, you know, thanks so much for that pointer. It seems like uh, Steve, what's his name? Steve Reed. Let's take a look here. Steve Reed has been really productive. Right, so I'll leave here a note for live 42 which will be next week i hope and yeah we'll leave a note there mm -mm -mm. all right so yeah this this works so we have the, um, the application fixed and is back so i'm going to i'm going to upload it to the github repo do, 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 do. All right, so with comment, um, add me some files and push. And now, now we have everything here. All right, that's it. Any last questions, any last comments or anything? Okay, if so, I am going to go. Do, 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 do. Okay, this was live stream number 41. So we are, we haven't covered the, um, yeah, there is only one thing, one thing that I really, really wanted to do today. Save function. 
and a good night of sleep. <laughs> yeah, thank you everyone. And I'm just gonna do one last thing. Might take like just one minute. And this is going to be um, so as a recap really quickly um, this is the perfect freehand repo and what i saw before inside of packages is that there is this dev folder that has this source and i suspect it's also built with uh dev let's try jan start okay yarn install ah, yarn install so this is a um, uh, the, I think this is the, the React application for uh, the online application that we have for the um, perfect freehand, like the, the sample project. And if this builds, we might be able to, to have the, the actual application. I think this application is a bit too complex, but we could use its um, app structure to add commands on top of it and, and to start building off from there. So this is going to be like um, a bonus thing if, if it can happen. On the meanwhile, I'm going to do the outro and um, we are going to wrap up. Okay. Yeah, just a quick reminder for those of you who are online or if you're watching offline, Liking this video helps support the work that I'm doing here and also encourages me to, to do more of this. And if you subscribe, you'll get notifications when I go live next or when I upload new videos. But you know, you already know this. The community, if you haven't introduced yourself yet, you can join in none of the mass last Discord. There's a ton of people already, and I'm so happy that that you guys are even connecting to to see me online here. So it's super uh, humbling. And yeah, thanks a lot for your time and for watching and I'll see you next week. Really quickly, last thing behind the scenes. <laughs> the only thing, ah, this is going to take long. Right, I'm going to close everything and if this works, we're going to see it. If it doesn't, we won't see it. Close this, close this. And... Yep. All right, so Jaren start. This is the the last Thing. Okay, error could not sort perfect freehand market as external from the bundle. Market as external to exclude it from the bundle. Yeah, maybe install has been replaced with add. Maybe they did. Um, Hmm, that's weird. I guess I'll do a bit of, um, Cross marketing. Look at this guy already at almost four thousand. If you still don't know it, uh, Jose Luis García El Castillo, a friend of mine, is uh, doing live streams on computational design, a parametric cam. So I would, you know, I would encourage you to to go to his channel. Really good content. 
and if you don't know anything about grasshopper you should right not going okay i'll try this offline and see if it works otherwise we'll see you next week bye everyone thanks for watching again and see you soon